So today, our topic is the Pythagorean Theorem. How many people know what it is already? Okay, a lot of you. Uh, who could tell me? How about, uh, let's see. Andrew, what do you think? Isn't it like A squared plus B squared equals C squared? You got it. It's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Of course, you can't just say that because, you know, that's not always true, but there needs to be some sort of condition. In a right For what? In a, you need a, very good. You need a what? Uh, how about, hold, 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 how about uh, trees? In a right triangle. And I think a lot of you already know this, right? Because it doesn't work in any triangle, does it? Okay, in a right triangle, A squared plus B squared equals to C squared. But we have to know what ABCs are, right? Yes. So what are those ABCs? How about Lauren? Do you know what this thing? Okay. Not really? Okay. Uh, turns out, Lauren, write this down. I'll show you. If you have a right triangle, they actually wrote C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Is that okay? So C is T. Lauren, the C. Guess what? That C is your hypotenuse of the right triangle. So the square of the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse is equal to square of the each side. So look what it says. In a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the angle. Thanks. Okay. So write this down. Go ahead. And of course, uh, I'll wait. And of course, we're going to prove this. Okay. So write this down. There are many ways. There's a whole bunch of ways of proving this, but um, we'll uh, use what we actually learned from last time. Okay. So write this down. So nice review. As I said before, we're going to be proving this uh, theorem. And we're going to, like I said, there are many ways of proving this Pythagorean theorem. But we're going to actually use what we learned from last time. It's a nice review. So as you can see, they're going to use that dotted line as the uh, auxiliary line to help us. How do you think we're going to draw that uh, dotted line there? Uh, how about Alvin? Yeah, you draw from C. So basically, you're drawing an altitude from altitude to the uh, hypotenuse. Wait, doesn't that sound familiar? Did we do that? Corollary. Yeah. So let's review this corollary that we learned last time, especially the second one. Do you remember that CN? Okay. That's yeah. how we just the same as what we have here, right? Okay. So, question. Let's review it a little bit. This corollary says if you have a right triangle and you draw an uh, altitude to the hypotenuse. Let's review this a little bit, because this is going to be helpful for us to uh, prove the uh, Pythagorean theorem. What is the geometry mean in this corollary two? AC, right here. This is your x. Do you guys remember that? Yes. Because each of these legs. So, there, so that could be your x, or this could be your x. Yes. Right, remember? Because yes. it says, yes. yeah, it says, the, it says that each leg is the geometry mean. Let's do with AC first. If AC is a geometry mean, this is geometry mean between what? Uh, how about, who remembers, Aquila? Um, it's AB and AN. Exactly. So your AB is your A, and AN is your B. B. So, yeah, it really doesn't matter because, you know, but let's just follow the corollary as it is. Because look at what he says. Each leg is a geometry between the hypotenuse, right? AB and then the segment of the hypotenuse. Like doesn't it doesn't matter because you could use the property of proportion. You could switch A and B. It doesn't you get the same. Wait, but can you use NB instead of A and B? No. If you use MB, if you chose AC first, and that MB would not be the uh, adjacent. The segment is, of the yeah, it, it would not be the segment that is adjacent to the leg. So that would be wrong if you did that. So as you can see, you get A. Since X is the geometry mean, right? X is right here. A over X equals X over B. B. So right? Was, That's what it's saying. If it was CB, it would be NB. Yeah, so if it was CB right here now, what is going to be Aquila? What is going to be your, so we're going to use the same proportion, right? What is going to be your A? Again, A is your hypotenuse AB. That stays the same. But what is your B this time? MB? It's NB because it's the one that is next to the leg, okay. not AN. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is your B. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what we need, right? Yeah. That's what it meant. In this. Okay, so it is important that you choose. Guys, you, you use this one here, the segment of what? Hypotenuse, that is what? Oops. Segment of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to the leg. That's important. It's not any segment of that hypotenuse. Right? You see how B and X are the adjacent ones? Right? Here, B and X. Those are the adjacent ones. Right? All right, so knowing this, how can we prove this? Well, this theorem uses that exact corollary that we just talked about. So, look at what we have here. After you, they even 
so let's write down what we know. So what can you tell me about B? B is going to be then the geometry mean between C and D. D. Would you not agree? Yeah. What about A? A will be the geometry mean between C, C and E. Everybody understand? So watch this proof. They do it nicely. So first, of course, you're going to draw that uh, uh, perpendicular line from C to AB. Is that okay? Once you've done that, right, and there's a reason, okay? Once you've done that, right, it's because to a point outside a line, there's exactly one line that is perpendicular to the given line, right? Okay, then what we can say is, where are they getting this from? Who could, hold on. Where do they get these uh, uh, proportions? One person see it? They got C over A equals to A over E, and then you got C over B equals to B over D. Where are they getting this? This is D? Colorary we just talked about. Isn't that right? Oh, okay. Right? This is the one that you just talked about. We reviewed. Colorary 2 from last time. Right? Okay. Then, from here, using the property of proportion, let's, because we want to say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Right? Right? So is there, is there a way to write A squared with this one and then B squared with the other one? Yeah. How? How can I get A squared from this uh, proportion? Using the property of proportion, what can we say? How about, Joseph, from this proportion, can I get A squared by? Using, no, yeah, what can, squared equals to? Exactly. B squared equals CD. You so got it. Yeah, hold on, hold on. It's a good, hold. So this is because of, okay, hold on. I'll, no, 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 you guys. I just want to do it step by step. So then we got A squared is equal to CE, right? And B squared is equal to CD. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Very good. Now, um, so then this is because of a property of proportions. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And don't we want to show that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared? Yeah. Okay. So let's write that down. Then wouldn't that be ce plus cd? Wouldn't that same as a squared plus? How did you get that? Yeah. What is the reason for this? Who remembers? Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. I want you all to think about it. Go ahead. I'll wait. Go ahead. Everybody think about this. How about who can help me? Why? How do we get? What would the reason from three to four be? How about uh, Ryan? Uh, addition property equality. Exactly. Do you guys remember the addition property equality? If A is equal to B and C is equal to D, what is A, a plus C equals to what? B plus D. That's what we have here, right? A equals to B and C plus E. So that's the addition property equality. You guys remember? Okay, that's great. Uh, so what can we do next? Because wouldn't it be great on the left side? If that left side equals to C squared, will be done. Is there a way to write that left side as C squared? How about, hold on, how about, how about Eric? What can we do to the left side? Okay. Uh, we got C E plus C D, right? Is there a way to rewrite this with C times something? Yeah, exactly. And what would the reason be? It's just simply distributive property. It's not don't write algebra. That's not a good thing. Okay. So it's distributive property, right? Then okay, what is look at the picture. What is E plus D? That is simply how about shh uh, Emily? Um E plus D equals C Yeah. Yeah, E plus D, isn't that just simply C? Yeah. They just use <laughs> substitution, okay? Because E plus D, that's also C, right? So, but if they were being careful, uh, because these are actually talking about the length of these segments. We're not talking about actual segments. Oh, okay. So when they say E plus D, they mean the length of these two segments too. So that's C, right? E plus D. So there you go. By substitution, you have the Pythagorean theorem proved. Okay? Do you see how the last corollary that we studied is use, was yeah. useful for this? Is this the only way to prove this? No. No, there are a whole bunch of different ways, okay? Yeah. But this is one of the ways, which is nice because it help us, helps us to uh, review, yes. right? That uh, uh, corollary. So everybody go ahead and try example uh, A, B, okay? I'll wait for you. Find X and find the other X, okay? Um, you're going to use, the, of course, Pythagorean theorem now, okay? I'll wait. Everybody try. It should be pretty straightforward, okay? Go ahead. Let's look at the first one. Um, so, somebody tell me what equation I should use using the Pythagorean theorem for this one. How about, okay. Chris, what equation would you use? You can use the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 
Hmm? Got it. You're right. Okay. And of course, we're not to do this. How many people got 49 plus 9 equals x squared? Good. And then you add them together, yeah. 58. Square root both sides, right? Yeah. Well, you get plus or minus 58, but do we need the negative part? No, no because x is, right? It's a, yes, it's got to be positive. It's a distance. All right. Now, what about b? Who could tell me which equation I need to use? Nor. What do you think? Good, and x plus 2, you need parentheses around it, right? Yeah. All right, so who could tell me? I think a lot of you messed this up. Uh, hopefully you didn't. Okay, what is x plus 2 squared? Is it x squared plus 4? No. Okay, please don't. Do, okay, it, x plus 2 squared is not x squared plus 4. Because, yeah, some of you made that silly mistake. Okay, hold, hold on. How about uh, Jonathan? What is x plus 2 squared? What does that give you when you... X plus 2 times x squared? Yeah, which is? Exactly. You get a trinomial, right, guys? Remember? All oh, right. All right. So don't write x squared plus four. If it was, if it was two x, then yeah, you get four x squared, right? It's this. It's addition in the middle. It's a binomial. When you multiply two binomials, right? Uh, most of the times you get three terms. When do you get two terms? Um, if it's a like perfect square. No. Yeah. If it's x plus one times x minus one or something. It if it's a difference of two squares. Square. All right. So here we go. Uh, you get difference of two squares when you have those numbers. Okay. All right, then um, what do we do next? This becomes Darius. You get 2x squared plus 4x minus 96, right? Yeah. So what do we do with this, Darius? How do you solve this uh, polynomial? Factor. Yes, you need to factor. Before you factor, uh, you should always look for GCF. Does it have a GCF? Two. Yeah, yeah, so two. let's get rid of that. How did, where do they get... How how did they get that two out of there? How did by yeah they both side they divide, divide both sides by, by two, right? Because it equals to zero, right? The yes. whole thing. Remember zero product property. Whenever you solve an equation, right, that is not linear, you gotta make it equal to zero, right? So you could use you could use zero product property. Uh, then you could either factor or use Pythagorean. I mean, use uh, quadratic formula and so forth. But uh, this factor doesn't it? It's easier to factor. Uh, what's the factor to? How about uh, Joseph? You got it. And so when is this true? A, you can have x minus a. So. <laughs> right, right, right. When is this true? This is true when x equals 2? Negative, negative 8, because then it will make this factor be 0. When is this true? When x equals Seven. to 6. So there are two possible ways. But then, you, just like Joseph said, we can't have x equals negative 8, right? Length can't be negative, negative because we're looking for length of this, right? Yep. You have to go backwards. Yeah so, yeah, so x equals to 6. How many people got x equals 6 here? Very good. If you didn't, do you see how you get x equals 6? Yes. All right. Any question? Can you do something like this for your homework tonight? Yeah. Good. All right, good. That's it then. Okay.